be yourself or to create yourself? That is the question. Hello, my name is Stephanie Toma and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, you can expect to hear things about personal growth, professional development, original music, travel, and a whole lot more. So to jump us into this topic of this dichotomy, perhaps a false dichotomy of being yourself or creating yourself. I'm sure you've heard people suggest that you should do both of these things. It can be conflicting. We'll start out by breaking down what it means to be yourself and what it means to create yourself. And then at the end, we'll tie them together to help you find coherence with both. When it comes to being yourself, this is a sort of fixed mindset. It means that you need to, first of all, know yourself. So especially as little kids, if you're told you need to be yourself, it can be really confusing because you don't even really know who you are yet. You're getting to know yourself through your formative experiences. And there can be an opportunity when you know yourself, when you go through that introspective work, when you have a mentor or guidance that helps you get to know yourself and understand yourself more. Then you can't be more resilient to misunderstandings out in the world where people think of you in a certain way that maybe doesn't really jive with how you view yourself. It could go one of two ways. You could root down and, and not be offended because, for example, if someone says you have purple hair and you don't, then you just get to be like, okay, that's your perspective. I actually don't think I have purple hair, but oftentimes it's not something as surface level or silly and as obvious as that. It can be someone saying you're a selfish person, someone saying some other negative attribute that you have and you get to reflect based on knowing yourself. Does it actually fit with your self-concept? Will you let that in? If there is a shadow aspect of yourself, that this, this is something that, is not open to change, that's inflexible, and you view it as a part of yourself and how you naturally show up, and then someone points it out, then you may actually feel triggered and really bad about that because let's say it's something that you've been trying to hide about yourself. And if someone points it out, that's when you will actually have a negative feeling because not only is someone else pointing something out, Maybe lovingly, maybe not, but they're highlighting something that you have tucked away that you would like to be hidden. When you truly know yourself, ideally it's at a soul level, but hey, it could be at an ego level as well, but focusing on if we're going to dichotomize, be yourself is more soul at its essence, right? Where ideally there isn't a lot of shame because at your soul essence, these expressions that could be considered as negative, that's not really you at a soul level a soul purpose level, what you're here to do, the way that you show up, the essence, the feeling that you tend to evoke in others when you are in a calm, healthy, happy state. Let's go on over to creating yourself. So this is, by contrast, more of a growth mindset. This can be really popular and empowering in professional and personal growth spaces where, okay, you don't like something about your life. You don't like something about where you're at. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps. Go ahead and change it. If you can't change your mindset about your situation, then go ahead and take proactive changes towards a different reality. This can really be helpful when it comes to creating a vision for your future. Even little kids, instead of being asked, can you go ahead and be yourself? <laughs> instead, someone says, hey, who do you want to be? And that's when as a little kid, you may say, oh, I want to be, I guess, an astronaut or a ballerina, or maybe it's something that is sole purpose related if you have reasons behind it. But oftentimes these can be things that other people we've heard, ooh, that seems impressive. Like a parent was a police officer, so maybe I wanna be that. When there is such an opportunity when you are creating yourself to be informed by who you are at a soul level. But if we're gonna still keep up with this dichotomy, it's more forward thinking and empowered. And a shadow aspect of this is that you can end up being extra accommodating to others and lose your true self in the creativity. Let's say that you have disowned aspects of yourself and you've convinced yourself they don't even exist anymore because that's not the version of yourself that you're creating. It doesn't fit with that. So that is a construct of ego. And guess what? When we disown aspects of self, they can show up in leaky ways where let's say that you want to be a patient person. When for a lot of your life, you've been a little, a little snappy, a little impatient, then you're in a really activated, aggravated state and you snap at someone. They may have grace with you because you're not typically like that, or they could think, wow, that really changed everything. I don't view, view the same anymore. 
And then that can cause a lot of shame because again, someone else is disowning the aspect of self that you have also maybe unintentionally disowned because when we are creating ourselves, that can be from an ego perspective because from a soul perspective, we do know who we are. It's this sort of forgetting and remembering, especially if you happen to believe in past lives and having a sort of soul mission of different people being here to serve different purposes in life. I have a few questions for you that can help. I'd like you to make a list of your top 10 aspects of yourself, how you know yourself to be. Let's not label this good or bad, right or wrong. And then you're going to go through that same list and mark them. Okay. This is a soul aspect and this is an ego aspect. There can be periods of time where there's space for ego that can help us identify what our goals are in this reality and move forward to be creative and to be out there with what we're here to do. But if it's too far in the direction of ego and not rooted in a soul purpose, then there's going to be a lack of resonance either for yourself or for other people or both. In order to have a sense of resonance with others and yourself, that's when the soul purpose comes into play. So that's why you may have heard me say this before, that I don't view personal and professional development as being starkly different. It's completely possible to merge your purpose in this life with the work that you do. You know, whether that be paid work, whether that be how you spend your downtime, the idea is to get clear on what that soul work is and Maybe it doesn't feel like work. Maybe it feels like play. And the idea is to know it and to actively engage in it. So I'd love to know in the comments, if you are in a season of being yourself or creating yourself, or maybe there's a combination going on, you can go ahead and stay connected by signing up for my newsletter, where I like to say hello every single week. And if you're interested in further support, you can go ahead and explore my coaching link. I'm going to put it all down below. Wishing you a wonderfully connected day inside and out. Until next time.